Greg, 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 Greg. <laughs> All right, you kicked us off. That was good. That was good. And somebody said, Am I in the right place? Yes, you are in the right place. Welcome to TechSuit's hosted webinar discussion. Today, we're going to be talking about the 2022 new features and best setups for QuickBooks. I'm Aretha Simons, your webinar producer here at TechSoup. Everybody's on mute. You already know that. That's housekeeping rules. Type your question in the Q&A. Type them in the chat session. They have plenty of help to answer your questions. If you hear something new today, tweet us at TechSoup. Hashtag us. Listen, this is being recorded. So you will get the recording within 48 hours and the um, PowerPoint. So stand by. Greg, I'm excited to hear what you got to say today. I'm gonna turn it over to you, but I want to say one more time on behalf of TechSoup and our over 100 partners, we want to welcome you today. And I'm sure you're going to learn a lot. Keep typing in the chat room. I'll see you in a minute. Cool. All right, guys. So uh, welcome. A um, <clears throat> couple of things. Um, when you have questions, you can either put them in the Q&A or you could put them in the chat. Now we've got hundreds of people today. So the chat's going to be a little tough but I can see the chat. So if you got something quick, and I'm gonna be looking over here, if somebody asked me a quickie, I'm gonna stop and answer it right from the chat. Also, sometimes I'm gonna ask you stuff, like, what do you think about something? Or I'll ask a question. And unless it's a poll, I want you to put it in the chat, okay? So get familiar with where the chat is. Um, here's a little picture of it right there. Let me put my little, here's the chat right there, and here's the Q&A over there. This raise hand thing, I don't know, don't be doing that. Just put it in the Q&A or put it in the chat, all right? Now, another thing I'm gonna ask to kind of keep you, because I'm gonna be giving a lot of new and a lot of important information. Now, I understand that you ain't gonna be able to sit and listen to me babble for an hour and a half. And so we are gonna be taking a break, all right? We might even take two breaks, who knows? We may go crazy. And so I don't want you to pay attention to anything else but me. OK, while I am teaching, because every single word that comes out of my mouth is going to be important to you. All right. Plus, I'm just a really interesting person. All right. So uh, having said that, at what segment? Let's see. Will you have a segment for known issues and approximate fixed times? Now, that's an interesting question. I have no idea what you're talking about. Can somebody um, talk to Michael about his rather interesting questions? Okay, yes, we do have hands-on training for setting up QuickBooks. So I'm gonna stop right now. There's this idea that hundreds of you will immediately start typing in things into the chat. And uh, like Elizabeth, are there handouts? You'll be getting a recording. Uh, you'll also get a, a copy of the PowerPoint. Uh, so yes, you'll have both of those, okay? So, um, but try, when I get into the meat of this, try not to put stuff in the chat so much and try and listen to me, all right? All right, I'll try and uh, take, um, when we take our break, it might be a good time to ask questions. How long is the training? Uh, so um, 10 hours, yes, it's 10 hours. No, it should be around 75 minutes. We theoretically could go an hour and a half, but I'm thinking 75 minutes to 90 minutes. It won't be longer than an hour and a half, okay. All right, so who am I? Uh, let's see, who am I? Ah, so I am a CPA with an accounting practice in Atlanta, Georgia, and all we do is deal with nonprofits. I have about 100 or so uh, nonprofits that we do 990s for, uh, that we do uh, monthly bookkeeping for. We have audits. We audit nonprofits. We do about 30 of them a year across the country. Um, we also um, do tax returns for others and stuff like that. But our main focus is nonprofits. Additionally, I have a company called QuickBooks Made Easy. And let me pop it up onto the screen here. So if you get a chance, go to the website, QuickBooks Made Easy. And at that website, all we do is teach nonprofits like yourselves how to use QuickBooks. We also teach accountants and CPAs that work with nonprofits how to use QuickBooks. We have live seminars. Well, we used to for COVID. We have webinars. You're watching one of them. We have a three-day webinar series that coming, that's coming up in November that's going to give you a soup to nuts training on everything that you need. We also have training products on demand that are streamable, okay? 
Uh, and then we also have nonprofit tech support services. So I don't want to spend time doing a big advertisement here. I want to get into the meat. Um, but I just I do want to tell you that uh, we are going to give you discounts. Um, and um, I want to uh, mention that at the end. Though. All right. On the products and on the webinars. Now, one of the biggest things we do is tech support. When you have questions, you can call us up 24 hours a day, seven days a week. You can ask us to remote in or remote into your computer. Doesn't matter whether you have QuickBooks Desktop or QuickBooks Online, we'll be able to help you and answer your questions. Um, it's going to be either myself, Paige, or Barbara, who are both on the back end right now answering the questions in the Q&A. All right. So, um, and Paige, Barbara, you want to say hello to everybody? Because I know a number of you are already current clients and have tech support with us, and so they probably know you. Hey, everybody. So, Glad cool. you're here. Hi, everybody. Cool. All right. So, and then we have Bill Sims uh, in the back, and he is more of like the QuickBooks operations type of uh, marketing person. So, um, and he's in the back and he'll be helping as well. All right. But he doesn't know anything about QuickBooks. Neither do I, actually. No, I'm just kidding. All right. So enough about this. Let is, let's move on. Um, so this is a poll. So don't put this in the chat. I'm going to open up this poll. Uh-oh. Okay. Well, that's unfortunate. Okay. So, um, hmm. All right. Well, go ahead. I'm going to run this poll. And um, there's going to be four questions in this poll. Uh, and I want you to answer all four. No, you know what? I don't want you to do that. It's too much. I'm not going to do it that way. Okay. So in the chat, um, uh, we unfortunately there was a problem with the polls. So um, in the chat, um, I want you to put an answer to this. Which best describes why you came? Number one, I'm new to QuickBooks. Help. So put help in the poll if you're new to QuickBooks. But then a lot of you are here. You already know QuickBooks and you want to learn the new features. Okay. So if that's you, put that in the poll. New features. Um, some people are here because they've heard there's a huge change in Quickity Books. Um, and there is some people just like listening to me and some people are highly sedated and have no idea why, while they're here. Um, so Aretha, can I ask you to do me a favor um, in the background? Can you go into the polls, Aretha, and make them three separate polls, or four separate polls rather than one big poll so that I can pull them up individually? I'd appreciate that, Aretha. Do you know what I mean? Hopefully she does. All right. So it looks like um, it looks like it runs the gamut, but it does look like most people are here for the new features. All right. Oh, she likes to um, listen to me. Okay, so that's cool. All right. Enough of that poll. All right. So let's move on. And all right. So this is the agenda. Now, start by just looking at me. Hey, how are you? This is going to be kind of like in two sections. First, we're going to do. <clears throat> the new features, okay, and the new pricing. And then we're gonna do setting up QuickBooks and what the best setup is. And both of these things are gonna be important for everybody, but if you're kind of a newbie and you need help, you're definitely gonna to wanna to make sure that you stay for the setup, okay? Um, but of course I want everybody to um, stay for all of it because we have a big surprise at the end for you. Uh, let's see. Uh, Adrian says the chat is distracting, so um, I apologize for that. Yeah, there is a lot of people going on in the, in the, okay, so let's see what the agenda is. So here we go. First thing, big change in QuickBooks desktop, okay, um, and uh, let's see, I wonder if, if she's, let me know, Aretha, when you've changed the polls, all right, so, um, so that they're separate polls rather than all in the same poll. All right, so the first thing we're going to cover is a big change in 2022 desktop, okay, change in the pricing structure. After we do that, and it's going to freak everybody out that has desktop, uh, then we're going to look at the differences between QuickBooks Online and QuickBooks Desktop. This is something that people always ask. I never have time to talk about it, and I'm going to make time to talk about it today, all right? Because I know there's a number of you that are in desktop that are wondering when or if I should switch to QuickBooks Online. 
And there may be some of you that don't have either product yet and are trying to decide, okay? So we're gonna talk about what the differences are, which product is best for you, okay? Then we're gonna get into the specific new features. And I'm gonna talk about new features in QuickBooks Desktop for PC, in QuickBooks Desktop for the Mac, and finally, in QuickBooks Online, all right? So we're gonna do them for all three. I'm gonna tell you right now, there's not that many, but we're gonna focus on a few that are really, really cool. And then I want all of you to start using, okay? Then we're gonna get in to the best way to set up QuickBooks for your nonprofit, all right? So that's how we're gonna run. And um, I really would love it if, hey, Aretha, are you, have you been able to change any of the polls yet? Because the second poll, I really would like to get a real answer from. Yeah, the second poll is up. Okay, awesome. Thank ready. you. Thank you. Uh -huh. I love you so much. Okay, how do I get to where it is? When I click on polls, I'm just getting that. Oh, I can pick them. I see. Okay, great. Okay, perfect. Thank you. All right. So this poll, I want everybody to answer the poll. Which QuickBooks product are you using? QuickBooks Desktop for PC, which by the way, if you're confused, QuickBooks Desktop for PC looks like this. QuickBooks for the Mac, this is a desktop product that is for people that have a Macintosh. QuickBooks Online, QuickBooks Online is, let me see what, where is that one? I have so many data files open, it's, is this see. QB online? Hold on. I'm looking to, okay, there it is. It's right here. I forgot. Okay. Here's QuickBooks Online in case you want to know what it looks like. Some people are using both. They're using QuickBooks Online and they're also using QuickBooks Desktop. And some people don't have either yet. Okay. So um, just a few more people waiting to answer. I'm going to end the poll and then I'm going to show you something because this is a really interesting question. We've got a big group of people. We got over 300 people on the call here. So we're going to get a real good picture of who's using what out in the world. So I'm going to go ahead and end the poll right now and I'm going to share the results. Now look at that. QuickBooks for the desktop, which is the program that's on my screen right now. We've got 138 of you. That's 41%. I'm going to skip down two to QuickBooks Online. This is what QuickBooks Online looks like. We got 43%. So it's about half and half. All right. Now, as the time moves into the future, my guess is QuickBooks Online is going to increase and QuickBooks Desktop is going to decrease. Now, QuickBooks for the Mac. All right. If you are one of the five people out of over 300 that are using QuickBooks for the Mac, I want you to put something in the chat. I wanna know who you are, put something in the chat. And I wanna tell you that I don't want you to be ashamed, but I will tell you, you need to get off that program as far as I'm concerned. Almost no one is using it. And you know what that means, okay? Uh, QuickBooks isn't going to spend a whole lot of time on it if very few people are using it. So I would really, really consider going to QuickBooks Online. Okay. All right. Adrian says, let it go. All right. I will. All right. So then um, there's 26 more than one and 22 that don't have it yet. But as you can see, it's um, back and forth between QuickBooks Desktop and QuickBooks Online. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and get rid of the poll. And uh, so now let's get into the big deal. Okay. So for the uh, half of you guys that are using QuickBooks desktop, here we go. So there is a big change in pricing. Okay. So let me explain to you what it used to be or what it has been all this time. Used to be, or I guess what it is now, you can buy QuickBooks once and never replace it. You can just keep it forever. Let me get to where my uh, tech soup is. Uh, nope, where is TechSoup's website? Well, I'll just open it up again. So you can go to TechSoup. And if you click on Intuit, this is where you should be buying QuickBooks. I assume that you know this because it's very cheap. Now, in the past, the QuickBooks desktop is $78 
for the premier nonprofit edition. You pay it once, you never have to buy it again. Now, every year they come out with a new version, but you didn't have to upgrade, okay? If you have three people using the program, it's only $168. And if you're one of those people using the Mac, you could get it for 50 bucks, okay? Now, that's how it used to be. So here comes the big change. Uh, let me go back to where... Uh, now, of course, I can't see. There we go. Here comes the big change. Beginning with version 2022 of QuickBooks Desktop, and those of you that are, have the online edition, pay attention because it'll make you feel good. All right. So beginning with QuickBooks version 2022, it is a subscription only annual fee. So if you decide to upgrade to QuickBooks 2022 and save your questions, because I'm going to answer them as we go. So don't, don't, don't say anything just yet in the chat, okay? So um, QuickBooks version 2022, subscription only, an annual fee. They're going to change the name of it. It's going to be called QuickBooks Desktop Plus, okay? Plus indicating that is theoretically a new product, okay? Because it's a subscription-based service. Now it's not a monthly fee, it's an annual fee. I know you wanna know what the price is. We'll talk about it in a second, okay? All right, so um, now let me make sure that you understand. QuickBooks Desktop is a data file and a program that exists on your computer's hard drive. In QuickBooks version 2022, even though it's subscription-based, your data file will still be on your hard drive, okay? Still be on your hard drive, okay? But in order to access it, you're going to need to sign in to your Intuit account. Now, you may not even know this, but everybody who has QBO has an Intuit account, okay? People with desktop, once you register your product, you have an Intuit account, and you'll have to put in that login. Okay, yes, it's like Adobe or Microsoft, exactly, okay? Now, what this means, now listen to me. If you're in desktop land, first, when you log into Quickity Books, in other words, when you try and you click that little QuickBooks icon on your computer's desktop, if you're you know, in desktop, you're going to have to first put in your Intuit account login information. And then after that, you'll have to put in your QuickBooks login information for your actual data file. And these are two different logins. And a lot of people get confused about that. So to make it less confusing, let me explain to you. When you go to Quickity Books, QuickBooks Desktop, this program right here, before you get in here, you are going to get this pop-up that asks you to sign in to your Intuit account. This is your Intuit account. Do not put your username and your password for the data file. This is your Intuit account login. If you do not have one, you will need to create one. Here, let me zoom in on here. You will need to create one or you'll need to ask the person what it is. This is the only way that they will be able to know in version 2022 that you have a subscription, all right? And therefore you'll be able to use the file, okay? Now, you won't have to do this every time, all right, you'll have to do it every 90 days. Now, after they show you that screen, then you'll get the screen that you're used to seeing where you put in your username and your password, okay? So, um, Gail, the uh, email account is for the account uh, and the username and password is for the individual users. So each user will have their own username and password. Um, does each user have their own separate Intuit account? Um, that's interesting. Paige or Barbara, do you know? I believe they do, yeah. And it also, okay. yeah, it also allows you as like an accountant to log in using yours. Mm -hmm. So you Angie is already upset. This is so irritating for smaller nonprofits who cannot be upgrading and paying a monthly subscription. So it wasn't a monthly subscription. Okay, so before you get upset, it's not a monthly subscription. It's an annual subscription, okay? So we'll get into logging into different companies. Basically, once you get through this screen, then you pick your company, okay? So I only had one. If you have more than one, you go to file, 
because like the first login just lets you get into the program and then you open whatever company that you want to open okay and then you log in i'll just click open here if you have more than one company file most of you only have one but if you have more than one uh then you can pick whichever one you have again i only have one so i'll just open it up here now because i've already logged into my intuit account i won't have to do, do it again for 90 days okay so i can just do this the normal thing that i'm used to okay so um and then it should take me unless i put in the wrong one but i just see people that get the intuit login confused with their quickbooks login so i just wanted to make sure by showing you these slides these are two different things all right so um all right let's go on a little bit more so going back to the beginning it's a subscription only it's not a monthly fee it's an annual fee i'll tell you what the price is in a minute okay it still will be on your hard drive intuit account in order to access now why would we want to do that is there a way to just show greg's screen so we can see it better so um bill or aretha um is there a way to maximize the screen isn't there a way to maximize the screen melissa's having to, an issue they have to do it on their end so they can right open the screen they have to open up their view and make their view larger Okay, so open up your view and make your view larger. Now, do you have a, do you know where that is? I don't know if she, can somebody tell her where that is? You can do one or two things. The easiest way is just the, I don't know what kind of computer you have, the shift plus sign and just make your whole screen bigger. That's the easiest way instead of trying to figure out around Zoom if you've never done it before. There's also, but in Zoom, there's views at the top, a view option at the top and um upper two right arrows to select so look at the top of your zoom and that would be the other way to get it everybody's trying to help you all right all right so um what do you get uh let's see so uh oh i've got one more suggestion um under the chat you can pick whether to send it to everybody or just the host and the panelists so before you chat, if you just send it to the hosts and the panelists, then that will make the chat not so annoying for everybody. Okay. All right. So um, what do you get? Because they're like, well, why would I want to do a subscription service? Well, one thing, you get free updates every year. So in other words, every year you'll get 2023 next year, then 24, 25 every year. Again, it's an annual subscription. Um, now, <laughs> they're saying that they're going to give free customer support. But if you've ever tried the Intuit customer support, you know, it's kind of a hit or miss. So take that with a grain of salt. That's why so many people use our tech support. Um, Intuit Data Protect, this is a thing that you get for free. And it's been around for years, but it's for desktop users and it allows them to back up their QuickBooks onto the Intuit server cloud so that if something happens to your data file, you can restore it. I'm not that excited about it because mostly people already have backup services anyway. Um, wow, Peter's upset. He wants us to go quicker. I I'm sorry, Peter. I apologize to you. Blah, blah, blah. I'm trying to be quick. We're almost at the pricing. All right. So um, the mobile uh, and, and so the big thing that they're going to give you that's going to make it really cool is a mobile app for uploading receipts that can be attached to transactions. Okay um all right so uh, i think the i don't know if the turbo tax works or not um barbara or a uh, page you might want to take that i don't know if that login is the same but the a feature that you'll get with desktop is that the mobile app will be available to upload receipts bills and other documents like grants all right so here's some common questions if I stop using the subscription, so say I sign up for QuickBooks 2022, and then a year from now when it's time to renew, I decide not to renew, what happens to my data file with all of its transactions? It's still on your hard drive, okay? But you just can't open it and you can't use it. Now, you can send it to somebody like your accountant so that I can open it if I have a subscription or you can download a 30 day trial of QuickBooks desktop. I'm sure that'll be around so that in six or seven years, if you get audited, you'll be able to get to the file. So it's still there, just don't necessarily be able to use it. Okay. The other questions 
people are like, well, what if I just say screw this and I stick with my old versions, 2021 and before, will they still work? See, Wendy just asked the question. Here it is. Yes, they will still work. But just as has always been the case, they won't be supported after three years. Now, what does that mean? That just means that uh, if you have problems with it, there's not going to be bug fixes. Um, and also, it won't work with connected services that Intuit offers, like QuickBooks Payroll and QuickBooks Merchant Service. But I have clients that don't use QuickBooks Payroll. They don't use the Merchant Service. They're using QuickBooks 2016, you know, and they're fine with it. Okay. So, yes, it'll still work. Okay. Yes, Erica, we're talking about desktop versions. Welcome to the party. All right. So, um, all right. So options, if you have QuickBooks Desktop, those of you in QBO, don't worry, we're going to get to you. We're going to talk all about new features, but options, if you have QuickBooks Desktop, one option is don't upgrade, okay? It'll still work the older versions, okay? Another option is if you have an older version, upgrade to the latest version, QuickBooks 2021 Desktop. You have until December 10th to do this. Um, and you can get it through TechSoup. Uh, so let me go to TechSoup's website here just to show you. Uh, here's QuickBooks 2021. It's only $78 for a single user license. It's three user licenses, $168. So if you have, uh, if you're going to upgrade to 2021 and then stop, I guess what I'm saying is everybody who has a version older than 21, if you're not gonna upgrade to 2022, at least upgrade to 2021, it's really cheap, okay? All right, uh, let's see. And yes, the versions will work on into the future, okay? They're never gonna stop those versions from working, okay? All right, a third option is to go ahead and take the plunge into 2022 plus. The price is a question mark, we're about there, okay? And then the other option is move to QuickBooks Online, okay? So here comes the price. Peter, are you ready? Um, no, $78 period for QuickBooks 2000 of 2021. The only time, the only ones that are an annual subscription are starting with version 2022. So Peter's over it, he's ready. Now, what I want to know is what the tech suit price is going to be for QuickBooks 22 plus. And the answer is nobody knows. All right. We don't know yet. They're still trying to figure it out. OK, now the market price, this is a price that everybody else pays, not the nonprofits that are getting it from TechSoup, but everybody else is paying five hundred and fifty dollars per year for one user license. Now. You get $100 off the first year, so that's $450. Now, that's not what nonprofits are going to be paying, hopefully, okay? So QuickBooks Online right now, which you can get through TechSoup, is only $160 a year for QuickBooks Online Advanced. So my assumption is that if they are going to offer QuickBooks Desktop 2022 on TechSoup's page, that I assume their annual subscription price will be close to 160 a year. It certainly won't be the 550 because they've got to give it at a discount if they're offering it on TechSoup's website. Is it going to go as low as 160 for the year? I would think so, but I don't know. And notice how I say here, if they offer it, okay? Because right now, they are not sure whether they're going to offer it on TechSoup's website or not. So we're waiting to find that out, OK? Um, Nancy's upset because she feels like we should have had separate sessions for desktop and online. I apologize, Nancy. Um, I'm, I'm about to get to online, I, I promise you. All right. So uh, all right. So when you look at this, you may say, you know what? Screw it. Maybe I should just go to QuickBooks Online. All right. Well, both our products are subscription based now, and I don't want to learn new software, right? <laughs> I don't want to learn new software. Isn't that the main reason. Um, but how is it different from desktop? So before we 
decide to move to QuickBooks Online. And this is important for QuickBooks Online users as well. Okay. So um, let's see, Nancy, do we think that Intuit as a company is trying to move people off desktop and to online? I'm going to talk about that. I used to think that, but I think as you'll see when, it, when we get to new features, um, I think maybe not so much, okay? So um, let's move on. So let's talk about QuickBooks Desktop versus QuickBooks Online, okay? So QuickBooks Desktop, QuickBooks Online, those are two different choices, all right? Uh, QuickBooks Desktop. If you decide for QuickBooks Desktop, which is, why do I keep missing it? There we go. I have too much up. Uh, it's going to look like this. There's different choices. Now, if you want to know what choice you have, you look at the very top bar here and it tells you what choice you have. Okay. We're looking at QuickBooks. Uh, this is Premier Accountant Desktop 2022. Right. Um, there's QuickBooks Pro, there's QuickBooks Premier Nonprofit, there's QuickBooks Enterprise, and there are QuickBooks for the Mac. Okay. You should, if you're a nonprofit, get either QuickBooks Premier Nonprofit because that's the one that TechSoup offers at $78 or QuickBooks for the Mac because they offer it as well, okay? Now, if you have QuickBooks online, okay, online, I'm going to online for the person that was upset. Let me go to online for you. Uh, where is online? Uh, there it is. So I'm going to go to QuickBooks Online. If you want to know what version you have in QuickBooks Online, you go to this gear right here, you click it, and you go over to Account and Settings, and it's going to tell you what version that you have, okay, when you click on Billing and Subscription, okay? Now, we have Advance, and that's the one that everybody should have as far as I'm concerned. There are five choices. There's Self-Employed, there's Simple Start, there's essentials, there's plus, and there's advanced. But only plus and advanced are offered by TechSoup, and only plus and advanced have budgeting and program tracking. All right. So that's why I think that's what you should get if you are a nonprofit. Okay. So that's the dealio with that, which of course, some people wonder well, then what's the difference between plus and advanced? So, uh, Let's see, um, let me go back to that other slide. Ah, so uh, where did I put that? All right, oh, we'll get to it on the next page, yeah. All right, the big deal with QuickBooks Advanced is that you can have up to 25 users in at the same time. But actually, you can have unlimited users depending upon what you want them to do. And I'll show you that in a minute. Okay. So, whereas in um, uh, QuickBooks Plus, you can only have five users in at the same time. So, the main reason uh, why I like Advanced is because you can have more users. But if you're saying, I don't need that many users, I still want you to get advanced because there are other things that are really cool about it as well that we're going to be covering today. Uh, one of them is the ability to restrict what users can and can't get into is much better in advanced than it is in plus. You can have customized fields in your customer or donor list in advanced. You can't in plus. Um, and there are reporting advantages that you get in advance that you don't get as plus. And honestly, it's only $85 more a year. So get advanced next time if you don't already have it, okay? No, Bruce, um, uh, I am one who hasn't purchased anything yet. Oh, Bruce, there's, there's probably 20 of you here that haven't purchased anything yet, okay? So uh, let's go back into here. All right, so to go to desktop, or to go PBO? What's the right answer, okay? Now, both will track income and expenses. So I just wanna start by saying, people that think that QBO can't do near as good as desktop are wrong, okay? Track expenses and income, both will do that. Both will do reporting compared to budgets. Both will track programs. Both will track grants. Both will track funds, okay? so. Now I'm gonna focus on 
the main things that are different between QBO and desktop, okay? And I'm focused on these things because these are the decision makers to decide whether or not if you're in desktop, you should go to QBO, all right? So here we go. The first one, number of individual users in at the same time. In desktop, for that $78, you can have one person in at a time. If you need more than one person in, you need multiple licenses. With QuickBooks Advanced, you can have 25 people in at the same time. And because it's a cloud-based version, they can be everywhere all across the world, okay? They just need a username and a password. So QuickBooks Online Advanced wins here. The number of company files. Now, this is something where desktop wins. If you have like say you're a bookkeeper or an accountant, you have multiple clients, or you're a nonprofit that's running two or three companies, you have a 501c3 and a 501c4 and a 501c6, and they're different organizations, you'll be paying a separate $160 a year for online advance for each one of those data files. But for desktop, you can have an unlimited number of companies, okay? All you buy is the program and you can have an unlimited number of companies. It's kind of like Microsoft Word, where you have multiple Word documents, okay? All right, so this one, desktop wins, but it's probably irrelevant for most all of you that um, only have uh, one company file, okay? Customize reports. This is the biggest thing that people get upset about. They think, and it used to be true, that QuickBooks Online doesn't have near the reporting that QuickBooks Desktop does. That is not true anymore. Both of these are pretty good. Premier Desktop technically wins, but QuickBooks Online Advanced is good enough. And to be honest with you, I think it's Fine. I don't, I don't think this is a reason why you would stay with QuickBooks Desktop because of the reporting, okay? There is one reason why you'd stay with Desktop, and I'll get to that. Bank feeds. This is a feature that every one of you should be using. Now, it, what it does is it allows you to connect your QuickBooks to your bank, all right? And what that does is it makes it so much easier rather than entering each individual transaction using your fingers, you can simply download them from the bank and add them into your QuickBooks file. If you have credit cards and debit cards, it makes it a ton easier. It is automated and always free and online. In desktop, it's somewhat manual, all right? And so you can do it in desktop, but it's much better in online. So online wins here, okay? Donor thank you letter. If you collect donations, and you wanna send out a donor thank you letter, and you don't wanna use Microsoft Word, and you don't have an outside of QuickBooks database like Neon or Little Green Light or something like that, then you're probably gonna to wanna to stick with desktop because you can get letters directly out of QuickBooks desktop. Now you can get them out of QuickBooks Online as well, but you gotta use an outside app for it. Now, the one I like is called Donor Receipts. It's very inexpensive, and the letters that you get are actually better than the letters that you get when you do it in QuickBooks. So I still kind of think that I would stick with Online Advanced and get an app, an outside app, all right, to do my letters. All right, payroll. Payroll is the most important thing of all. And this is the one thing that will be a deal breaker for going into QuickBooks Online, in my opinion. If you are using QuickBooks to do your payroll, okay? In other words, you are in QuickBooks Desktop and you're using QuickBooks to do your payroll. You click here to do payroll, go into the Employee Center. If you're doing that, QuickBooks Payroll is amazing because it allows you to split checks between different grants and different programs. You cannot do that with QuickBooks Online payroll. So in other words, if you are using QuickBooks Online and you're running payroll out of QuickBooks Online, this program here, you will not be able to get the reporting to show the payroll split by grant and by program. So you end up having to do these weird entries in order to make it work. 
Okay. So what I would say to you is if you are using QuickBooks payroll and you don't want to switch to an outside payroll service like ADP, then you probably need to stick with Premier Desktop. Okay. So basically, this is the factor QuickBooks payroll. Okay. So Adrian uses a different service. So if you're using any other service other than QuickBooks, you're using ADP, you're using Paychecks, you're using uh, OnPay, you're using Gusto, whatever it is, you're entering that stuff anyway, or you're downloading it from the bank. And so you have to do the splits yourself anyway, go to Online Advanced. But if you're using QuickBooks Payroll, stick with Desktop for now. Otherwise, move to QBO, all right? So, um, now, this is something uh, that I want to share with you, because this was just the major differences between QuickBooks Desktop and QBO. A colleague of mine by the name of Hector Garcia, and he's a QuickBooks trainer like I am. He's in South Florida. He has created a Google spreadsheet, and the link is on your deck. It's right there, so I'm going to give you the link. This, he calls it his big something spreadsheet okay and it begins with the letter a but anyway i'm going to go to this spreadsheet and let you see what it is here's the spreadsheet all of you can get to it this spreadsheet was last updated on 929 he goes in and updates it periodically but what we have here is individual features look at how many features there are and for each feature okay it tells you Okay, here's batch invoicing, okay? Which product has it and which product doesn't, okay? So here's QuickBooks Online Advanced, here's QuickBooks Online Plus, here's QuickBooks Pro Plus 2022, here's QuickBooks Premier Plus 2022, okay? So it gives you for, there's over 200 of these. Another thing it really does, those of you that are saying, well, the reporting isn't as good, in online as it is on desktop, look at this. This tab here reports in QuickBooks desktop versus QBO. Look at this. This is over 200 reports that are in QuickBooks desktop, and it tells us whether or not they are in QBO with yeses or nos. Okay. So I think that's really cool. All right. So that is uh, the dealio with that. And let's see, again, the price, QuickBooks Online Advanced is only $160 a year. This price, we don't know. We're waiting for TechSoup to find out from Intuit, okay? And um, that's really it for that. And um, I want to take a quick break for everybody to kind of chill. Um, and then we'll get into the new features. So uh, let's see, because I'm kind of worn out. And this will be able to give you, what's the link for the spreadsheet? It's in your deck. It's a very, very long link, um, but it's in your deck. Maybe what I'll do is stick it in the chat here. Let's see if I can highlight this and put it in the chat. Well, you know what? I'm not going to do that. What I need to do is go ahead and just do a little five-minute break here. Um, let's see, uh, clock. All right. So we're going to do a little bit of, five, uh, uh, you know what? We'll do a, we'll do a three minute break. How about that? Um, let's make this bigger. Okay. So we're going to do just a three minute break here for you guys to go to the bathroom. You can get your questions answered and then we'll come back in three minutes. I would sing, but you probably don't want to hear me sing. And I apologize for the QBO people that got mad. So, oh, Kathy, that means in your deck, it's your PowerPoint deck um, that we're going to send to you. Just like the recording is going to be sent to you. Okay. I'll be back in like a minute or so.
All right, guys. So I want to make sure that everybody is back. And um, I am going to give you the link to Hector's deck. Uh, let me, here we go. I've got it right here. And okay, so I'm about to put the link to the to Hector's deck in the chat. And this is a Google, so you'll be able to see it whenever you want. And there you go. All right. So let's see. Barbara, um, I'll get you on the line, yes, Barbara, sir. for a second. Yes. Before we move on. Is there any, you said, are there questions that you feel like need to be addressed to everybody? Is there anything uh, in particular? Uh, nope, we're, Paige and I are, hand, well, Paige especially is handling the Q&A <laughs> and I'm find, kind of following on the chat, so I think we're good. Okay, okay, cool. So um, let me see, I'm gonna try and see if we can do. Um, hey, okay. Greg. Can yes. I chime in for a second? Sure. Um, the, what you're what you're asking and what Barbara was hoping you'd mention a little bit earlier, we're getting a few questions in the Q and A regarding how all these changes affect QBox users. I myself am not familiar. Do you have anything to offer regarding QBox? Well, QBox is um, it's kind of it's it's I, the the short answer is I don't know what the answer is going to be to that. Because QBox is a rather interesting um, uh, platform where basically it makes, there's copies of your data file in multiple locations. And then as you work on a data file, it makes a copy of it and it downloads it. It puts it in the QBox arena and then it downloads it to the other people that use QBox. So everybody has the most current file. I have no idea how this is going to affect QBox. I don't have a clue. You're going to have to ask them. Um, but it's a really good question. All right. So um, let's move on to some new features. I was going to do a poll, but I'll wait. Um, I'm going to do some features here. And because I know that people are anxious to hear about the new features. And so let me get that onto the screen here. And I have to move this. There we go. And move this and move this. All right. I'm feeling very stressed, I have to say. <laughs> All right. So um, let's move on. I guess there's just so many people and people were upset about not about the pricing. All right. So here comes the features. All right. So <clears throat> for all the new features, okay, um, for QBO, I'm going to take you to a blog area. Now, the deal with QBO, QuickBooks Online, it's not like once a year they come out with new features, right? QuickBooks Online, every week you turn on the computer and all of a sudden something's changed. There's a new feature. They've altered something. It's quite the pain in the butt, um, particularly uh, those of you. Let me go back. Let me go into QBO. Um, this bar over here on the left. This bar, these words change all the time. You know what I'm talking about? It's quite annoying. But anyway, they make changes and improvements to this thing all the time. So I can't really say what's new in 22 for QuickBooks Online. It's not like that, okay? So what I am gonna do is tell you there is a blog. Let me get back to where I was here. And here it is, here's a link, uh, quickbooks.intuit.com forward slash blog. And what this thing does is, and I've, I've saved it as a bookmark. And let me go over here to a new tab here. I'm gonna click new in QuickBooks and it's gonna take us to a blog post and they have an article in here every single month with new features. Here's what's new in September of 2021, okay? Now, the thing about this is many times what's new is not helpful for nonprofits, okay? So I'm not gonna go through everything that's new. I'm gonna go through the stuff that's new that's helpful for nonprofits in my opinion, but I wanted to take you where you could go to find out all the new features, okay? All right, and again, next month it'll be different. All right, for those of you that are using QuickBooks Premier, uh, 2000, you're gonna upgrade to 2022 for PC and the Mac, Laura Madeira has an article. She's amazing. She's another colleague of mine like Hector. And that's the link to that article. 
and it will give you a long article of what the new features are in version 2022. But again, I'm only going to talk about the new features that I think are important for nonprofit organizations. Okay. So when it comes to QBO, all right. Yes, it's the link to the chat. It's in the deck, which you'll get. Um, but uh, I can, we can put it in the chat as well. If Bill, if you can just find the links in there and put them in the chat. All right. So um, for QBO, mobile uploading of receipts and bills. Now, this is something that's actually been around for a little while, not the bills part, the receipts part, but it's amazing to me how few people use it. So I think it's really important that we talk about it. And if you know how I teach, I don't like to just skate over the surface. I like to deep dive into the things that I think are important. And this is important because it helps nonprofits have backup. So when audits happen, they're ready. Okay, so we're going to talk about that. Um, there is a new feature that just came out. It's in the advanced version of QBO only. That's the one that's $160 a year. Um, uh, let's see. Uh, Nancy, this is what we're talking about here. Uh, and yes, people use Divi. That's true. All right. So um, billing approval, a billing approval workflow. Um, this is something else that I think is really cool. It's in QBO advanced. Um, restricted user permissions. Remember I told you um, one of the things that's neat about QBO and that I think is better uh, in advance than QBO Plus is restricted user permissions. You can really pick and choose what they can and can't get into, and it's better than a QuickBooks Premier nonprofit desktop as well. Okay. Now, if you're going to stick with desktop and you want to know what the new features are, the biggest change of all for desktop, and we're going to go through this list, and I'm going to go into the program and show you, but the, for all of these, but the biggest change of all is that, and this is something that geek, geek computer people would know about, but the rest of us don't. It's something in the background. You'll never see it or whatever, but you'll know QuickBooks version 2022 should be a lot faster for you, and the reason why is because it's now set up to work in a 64 bit environment and 64-bit platform, all right? Um, most computers nowadays are 64-bit. Now, there are some old computers that are still in 32-bit, um, and that's why QuickBooks kind of delayed changing the software, to, but now it's no longer the software's not going to work in a 32-bit environment. So QuickBooks 22, you got to have a 64-bit platform in order for it to work. But that's it's been around 64 bits since 2012 and all the new computers that's all they have okay and it's been that way for a few years you should get an average of around 38 percent faster all right so that is the biggest change of all now because they spent this actually was a real uh investment in resources to make this happen but it's worth it because if it speeds things up that's cool but as a result, they didn't really make that many other changes to QuickBooks 2022, except this mobile uploading of receipts and bills, which is what we're going to cover. OK, I'm going to show you for both QBO and then I'm going to show you for desktop. OK, um, there's this feature that controls who gets sales forms like invoices and sales receipts, who gets the email. We'll show you that it's a little thing, but the people that need it, they're going to like it um, now for the. 10 or 12 of you, or actually it was five, that have QuickBooks for the Mac. Um, they have a couple of features here. Bank feeds <clears throat> are uh, better in QuickBooks for the Mac than they were before. And you can collapse columns and rows in QuickBooks for the Mac, okay? Um, that's really, the, there's some other changes. Again, you can go to this article here. Um, uh, but there's not really much other than those two things that I think is worth it for nonprofits. Um, but I'm going to spend the rest of the time looking at the QBO and the desktop changes. And the main thing I want to focus on before we get into the best setup for nonprofits is this mobile uploading of receipts. Okay. So, um, all right. So let's take a look and see how this works. So the idea is that you'll be able to, when you're out at a restaurant, Take your phone, 
and take a picture of the receipt and then upload it into QuickBooks and then attach it to transactions in QuickBooks. And you'll be able to do this in online as well as desktop. So uh, you upload the receipt. You can also upload a bill, okay, from your smartphone. That means iPhone and Android. Uh, it create, and you can use that receipt to either create a transaction in QuickBooks from scratch or match to a transaction that you've already entered in QuickBooks previously, okay? Or that's already been downloaded from the bank feeds, okay? It attaches to the transaction in QuickBooks and it's great for backup. Now, if you start using this receipt feature, it's great for you because now if you have uh, um, staff that use credit cards and debit cards and you don't know about anything until a month later when the bill comes, as soon as they finish with the charge and they take the picture of the receipt and it gets uploaded, you know about it immediately and you can point it immediately. So you know as soon as it occurs, so it makes the bookkeeper happy. I'm happy if I'm your auditor because now I can very quickly see um, the receipt because it's attached. So when I'm auditing your QuickBooks, I'm auditing your books, and I look at your QuickBooks file, I don't have to ask you for the receipt. They're already there. Um, entries are happy because we can save paper, okay? Uh, what's the name of the app? There, this is not an app. This is within QuickBooks, okay? This is within QuickBooks. This is not an app you have to get, okay? All right, now this is not actually new for those of you that really know QuickBooks well. Actually, QuickBooks desktop for PC, it was available in 2021, but you had to have a desktop subscription service in order to get it. They actually had a subscription service last year. Almost nobody used it. Everybody just bought QuickBooks and they just had a flat rate QuickBooks and they didn't have it now everybody's going to have to use a subscription. So everybody's going to have this service. Okay. Um, the part of uploading bills is definitely new. Um, now, uh, if you have online edition, this has been around for a while, not the bills upload, but the, certainly the receipt upload, and it's gotten better over time. Um, and if you have QuickBooks for the Mac, the five of you that have that, you can't use that. Okay, uh, do you have to be a user to upload bills in QBO? You have to have an Intuit account that connects to your QBO, okay? So, uh, all right, so you, so for, what we're gonna do is we're gonna walk through these steps now. And I took all these pictures from the phone that I'm gonna show you on the screen so you know exactly what to do. By the way, multiple phones are fine. So if you have 15 employees, each one could have the app and each one could be uploading to the same QuickBooks file. All right. Yes, you're right, Kelly. Sometimes the match feature isn't the greatest. All right. Okay, here we go. So the first thing you do is you get your phone and you push the A. Okay, that's the app store. Now you will type QBO. And you can do, don't do it now, but do it when we're done with this call. Um, you can type QBO in the search and you're gonna have more than two, but these two will pop up. One's gonna say QuickBooks account. One says QuickBooks desktop, okay? The one that says QuickBooks account, that's the one that you'll use to link to a QBO account. The one that says QuickBooks desktop, that's the one that you'll use to hook to a QuickBooks desktop account. Now you'll need to have QuickBooks 2022, all right? All right, now once you click on that, you'll install it, okay? Now once you install it, you'll open the app and then you're gonna need to basically connect to your QuickBooks file, okay? So first, after you install it, you'll get this screen here, okay? And you'll either click create account or sign in. If you already have a user ID and a password for QBO, you just click sign in, okay? If you're in desktop land and you don't know the Intuit account, you need to find out. Uh, if you've never set up an Intuit account, you can create one right there, okay? Once you're done with that, then you put in your username, and your password. So that's the next window that'll pop up after you click sign in, okay? Then 
it's going to want to send a verification code. It'll be to your email or it'll be to your phone. I said, go to the phone. That was a thing. I stuck it in there. And then the next thing that happens is now it knows my Intuit account. Now it wants to know which company file do I need to connect to? Because you could have five different QBO accounts that you access from the same Intuit account, username and password. You could also have five different QuickBooks desktop accounts that you access from the same QuickBooks Intuit account, username and password. So what happens is it's going to give you a list of the company files associated with that QuickBooks account. Now, I'm an accountant. I have plenty of them. You only may have one that shows up, okay? But when it shows up, you select it by clicking on it. A little checkbox will appear. You pick your company, and then it'll load the company. So this is when you're basically exactly connecting to your QuickBooks um, uh, your QuickBooks company file, you're connecting it to your phone, basically, so that when you take a picture, it knows which company file to put it to, okay? Now, after you do that, you'll get a window here, and I'll just zoom in on this window. It says, what are you most interested in doing in the mobile app? Because there are other things that you can do here, um, track and send invoices, um, uh, create estimates or quotes. This is something that construction people like to do from their phone. But I'm just going to pick organize my receipts. You can go back and pick these others if you want to later on. I'll click organize my receipts. After you do that, then you're ready to go. So in the future, whenever you are ready, you're finished doing whatever you're doing, you're getting a receipt or a bill. If you got a bill, maybe electronically or whatever. Um, if you got a paper bill, those when you'd want to take a picture of it. Um, how much does your company charge for working with nonprofits? I think that's a question just for me. All right. So um, anyway, so this is what it looks like on your phone if you have um, QBO. In desktop, the screen looks a tiny bit differently, but I'm going to click snap receipts. Okay. And then you literally take a picture. This is me taking a picture of me taking a picture. All right. Um, and you got to move to get the green so that it makes sure that you um, get the whole receipt. And when you're ready, you push at the bottom and then it's going to take the picture and then it's going to ask whether or not you want to use the photo. Um, Tammy, any, any person who has access, who you want to have access, you can give access to. You just have to give them an Intuit account and a user ID. Okay, I'm going to click use the photo. It's going to upload the receipt. Now, understand this is all happening from your phone. They're not in QuickBooks. So don't worry. They're not screwing with your QuickBooks. All they're doing is taking a picture that uploads to QuickBooks. Now, let's go into QuickBooks and take it from there. All right. So I'm going to go into QuickBooks. Uh, where is my Quickity Books? Um, I've got so many windows open, it's ridiculous. Uh, where is my QuickBooks? Oh, it's over there. Nope, it's not there either. All right, well, I'm just going to log in again. So I'm going to log into my QuickBooks. Okay, so I log into my QuickBooks. Now, the first question is, where is this uploaded receipt? Well, you know, I don't like going to this bar over here, but when we go to banking and we click on receipts, this is where the uploaded receipt will be. So I'm going to go ahead and click on it. Okay, so here it is. And if there's a transaction that's already in the system that matches that information, it's going, look at this, it says, I've already found a record in here. Do you want to match? Okay. Now I'm going to go in. I'm going to delete that transaction because I want to show you what happens if there isn't a transaction in here. So let me go ahead and delete that transaction. <clears throat> and uh, I'm going to do a search to do that. All right. And what was it, $11.98, I think. 
uh, oh, reference number. I need to say that it's amount, $11.98. And there it is. So I had already entered this transaction, but what I'm gonna do instead is I'm gonna delete this because the idea is that you wouldn't even have to enter the transaction. You could basically create it from the receipt. So now there's no match found, you see? So I'm gonna go ahead and review this and it's gonna give me a picture of the receipt and look at what it guessed. It, it was able to read the dollar amount. It guessed an expense account, okay? Couldn't tell what the bank account was. Sometimes it can, if it's a credit card account or a debit card, it can read the account numbers. Um, but uh, we'll say this came from, this was, we'll say it was a credit card. It came from Amex. You can put your payee here. Um, let's see, roasters. All right. And now, one thing I need to tell you is that when you set up QuickBooks, you want to use the class feature to split your expenses between program, admin, and fundraising. And you want to use your customer job feature, yours might say donor, to point it to a grant if it's paid for out of a grant. So I'm going to put my grant here. I'm going to put, um, we'll say this was for fundraising. And let's say that this expense, this wasn't roasters. Let's say it was Office Depot that I went to and it shouldn't all go to travel. It should, you know, should, shouldn't all go to office supplies. I want it split between two. That's what this split expense is. So then right here, I can simply split it. And I can say, you know what? I want you to put part of it to travel and the rest of it somewhere else. So I can split this, all right, if I want to. And I can add additional lines to split more, okay? When I'm done, I'll go ahead and click Save it. I didn't enter anything there, so let me get rid of this. All right, and then I'm gonna click save, okay? And uh, that's weird, ah, create expense. It didn't find a match, so it's saying create expense. There it is, create expense. So now what it's gonna do is gonna literally create the transaction in QuickBooks, okay? Yes, I recommend customer for that. All right. Uh, no, you can't associate it with a purchase order, okay? You, so right now I've added it as a receipt, all right? So what's cool about this is I can go to where that receipt is. I'm gonna go to my chart of accounts list and I'm gonna go down to American Express, my credit card. And there's my $11.98. I'll go ahead and click on it. I'll click edit. And look at that, the receipt is right down here. So if I'm your auditor and I'm like, I, this is one I want you to pull the receipt for. I don't have to bother you anymore. There's the receipt right there. So I think that that is amazing. Now, somebody wanted to know um, if you could uh, turn it into a purchase order or put it in a purchase order and you can't put it into a purchase order, but you can change receipts into bills. Okay, so I don't have any receipts here. I wonder if I can undo this. I'm gonna undo it and then see if it's back for review. Cool. All right, so I'm gonna go over here, um, review. I'm gonna click review. Uh, and then, let's see, I've already made it an expense. I wanted to show you that you could turn it into a bill from here. I think it's because I made it um, I pointed it to um, an American Express. I'd have to add another expense to show you that you could turn it into a bill. Sorry about that. All right, the desktop version, let me go into the desktop version. So here we are in desktop 2022. Your receipts are under vendor and they're under receipt management. I'm gonna go ahead and click it. And it'll open up receipt management. And then here it is in receipt management, okay? So again, if it's already in there, it'll match it. I'll click on this drop down. I can move it to a bill. 
or I can review it. And when I review it in the desktop version, you cannot split the transaction. So if you have an expense that you want to split into different different accounts or different um, classes, you can't do it in the desktop version. So that's why I like the online better. The other thing about the receipts that's better in online is that um, the uploading is quicker because in online, you just have to upload it. In the desktop version, you have to upload it and then you have to download it into your file, okay? So approval processes, I'm gonna get to that. There's not necessarily an approval process here except for the fact that when you're looking at the receipt, I would assume this is where you can decide where you're going to point it and you could, you could approve before you added it to QuickBooks here. Uh, can you upload the photo twice and change the amount to split um, in desktop? Uh, you can upload it twice, but then I suppose you could change the dollar amount for the other half and save and add to register. Yeah, I suppose you could certainly do that. I think you certainly could. That's an interesting idea. I hadn't even thought about that. All right, um, let's see. So I'm gonna stop for a second because there's a couple of more features that I wanna show you. And then I, I, we only have like 15 or 20 minutes left. So I wanna make sure that everybody has a chance to um, get their questions answered. Uh, once I download to a bill, I assume you could split it then. That's right. Once the transaction has been added, then you can go into the transaction and split it then. That's exactly right. Okay. So um, the other thing that I just want to show you real quickly that is new in QuickBooks uh, 2022 has to do with multiple email addresses. Now, this is only helpful for those of you that actually send either invoices or sales receipts to customers or donors, okay? When you set up, I'm gonna to go to a, let's see, I'm gonna to go to the customer list and I'm gonna to go to, this is something that really you can already do in online, it's just new for desktop, but I'm gonna click on this and you will see that we have a main email for Peter and a CC email for Faith. This is the wife, husband and wife. If it was a company, it might be two different staff members that belong to that company, okay? Now, in the old versions of QuickBooks, when you did an invoice, and I, that's why I have this old version up, when you go to enter an invoice and email it to Peter, you go ahead and email the invoice. I won't go through the whole thing. The main person, the main email is always going to be the two. So you don't really have control. If you don't want Peter to get it, you have to manually override this so that just Faith gets it. Okay. In version 2022, when you go to email, customer, I'll do an invoice again, and we'll put new invoice and program fees. Make this a thousand dollars. When I go to email this, when you click here, there it is. When you click here, you'll get a drop down and you can pick and choose who the two person is. It could be both or it could be just faith. So you have more of a chance, okay? So uh, of controlling where it goes to. Now, the other Thing. That, that's really the main things that I wanted to point out that are different in QuickBooks Desktop 2022. The rest of what I show, what I'll show you is in QuickBooks Online. And it's two things. One of them is only available in QuickBooks Advanced. And that is the ability to restrict or control the individual users and what they can and can't do. So I'm gonna go to the gear and I'm gonna click on Manage Users. So when you're in QuickBooks Online Advanced, you can have up to 25 users. Now here, as you can see, I have three users. The only person who can change and add users is the primary admin, okay? But when I go to add a user, I wanna show you two things that nonprofits need. One of them is 
something that you can do even if you have QuickBooks Online Plus, and it's called reports only. Reports only. Right there. Okay. How many of you have board members or other people that demand to get into the data file and look at stuff and then they screw it up? Put something in the chat if that happens for you. How many people have that? You have people that get into the data file and they screw things up. All right. So QuickBooks has a reports only option. And I have set that user up. Basically, you click reports only, you click next, you put the per first and the last name of the person, you put their email, and then you send it to them. They open it up, they um, accept it, and then they'll be able to get in. But I'm going to go in as Bob. He's a reports only person. And I want to show you what Bob can do. So I'm going to sign out as me, and I'm going to sign in as Bob. And and we'll see when Bob goes into the QuickBooks file, he can get into two. That's why it's showing me, giving me a choice. But when he gets in, all he sees is reports. He can't get into any specifics. Okay. I can click on a, a PL. He can look at it. He can change the date range. Okay. I'll make it all dates. I'll run the report. Okay. He can double click and get to the details on one of them. Here's a bunch of transactions, but he can't click any further, okay? He can't get into the actual transaction window because then he could change it, okay? All he can get into is reports. This is a report, so he can't get into the transaction. Can you limit Bob to not see the payroll information? If you're using QuickBooks Payroll, it's reports only, and he's probably going to be able to look at all the reports, but I don't think he'll be able to get into the payroll. Uh, all right, I have to test the payroll reports to see that. I'm not sure. If, if uh, Paige or Barbara, if you know the answer, let us know. All right, so uh, I'd have to test it. Now, I'm going to go back in as me. And let's see, where am I? Here I am. Oops, wrong one. Sorry. And there it is. All right. All right, I'm going to go in here. All right, so now I'm going to go into manage users, and this is something that's only available in advanced. You see this thing here that says roles? I'm going to go ahead and click it, and when I click it, there's all these individual roles that you can assign to individual users. These roles are set by QuickBooks, but you can change them and alter them. So I'm going to look at the expense manager role. I'm going to click it right there, and I'm going to edit it. And you can see for each area of QuickBooks, you can control what they can and can't get into. All right? So this person can have has access to bills and checks but they don't have access to any of the rest of QuickBooks, all right? I'm gonna go ahead and click Next. I can adjust those roles if I want. Once I've adjusted the role and made it exactly what I want it to be, then when I go to the user and I'll go to Carol, I can assign that role to her. You see this expense manager? I've made her an expense manager. So let's go in as Carol and see what she can and can't do. All right. And there we go. All right. So with Carol, if you notice, she doesn't see all the stuff that's normally there in QuickBooks. Okay. And as a matter of fact, if you click on plus new, you can see what she can and can't get into. So she can enter a bill and pay it, but she really can't do anything else. Okay. Now, the last thing, I've got one more feature that I want to uh, 
uh, teach you? Well, the uh, standard user and an admin, an admin can get you get, can get into all the aspects of the program, Patricia, whereas a standard user can only get into um, that part of the program that you control, that admin person. Uh, so uh, let's see. There's a couple of things that I need to do before I let you go. One thing, and, and by the way, I haven't gotten to the, the part about setting up QuickBooks. So we're going to run a little long so I can do that. But before I do that, let me take you somewhere. So we have a three-day webinar series that's coming up in November. So if you go to QuickBooks Made Easy, you can find out all about it. I'm going to go to uh, webinars right there. It's happening for those of you using desktop on the 9th, the 10th, and 11th of November, and on the 16th, 17th, and 18th, it's for online. It's two and a half hours a day. It's not all day. We'll take breaks. And it tells you everything you could ever imagine about the QuickBooks, okay? Um, if you go into day one, there's everything we cover in day one. Here's everything we cover in day two, everything we cover in day three. And it's 2.49 normally. I'm going to give you a discount of $30. Uh, and let me get to where that is. There it is. Um, a discount of $30. When you go to TS30, that's the code that you want to put in. And instead of $249, it'll be $30 off. It'll only be $219. It's two and a half hours a day for three days. And you'll be able to learn everything. We put it in the chat here. Um, the other thing is if you're the type of person that says, you know what, I don't want to come to a webinar like this. I just want training when I want to do it. Um, you can click on on-demand training right here. And this bundle is 16 hours of learning. It's all about using QuickBooks for nonprofits, soup to nuts. It becomes the Bible for your nonprofit learning QuickBooks. We have it for both the desktop and for online. It's typically $399. We're going to give you $100 off by using this code right here, TS298. And then if you want tech support, that you can get tech support from us for a year. You can call us, we can dial in, remote in, answer your questions. You'll be speaking to Paige, you'll be speaking to Barb, you'll be speaking to me, there's a couple of others. It's normally $4.99 for a year. We're gonna give it to you for $2.99 for a year. That's the code for that, TSTS299, all right? And we are going to uh, send those codes out to you, um, but to get to the tech support, you just go here. So there's one other thing I want to get real quick. Um, yes, thank you, Barb. Anybody who is a house of worship in the on-demand training, there is a special house of worship training just for houses of worship that just came out, all right? Um, let's see. Uh, the other thing I wanted to do, there's one poll that I need to launch. Um, once a month, we come out with a newsletter. It's an e-newsletter that explains to you a new feature in QuickBooks and shows you how to do it. We don't use these lists for anything else. You'll get an email once a month. It's basically a couple of pieces of information and a link to the YouTube video so you can stay up to date on what's new in QuickBooks. So if you're interested in signing up for that newsletter, just put yes. I know a number of you already are getting it. Um, and then if you say no, that's fine. We won't give it to you. Uh, and so uh, I will leave that up just for a couple of minutes. And I am so sorry that we're running long. Um, it's the first time I've ever taught this webinar and apparently I mistimed it. I thought it wasn't gonna take long at all and apparently it does. All right, so, um, uh, so Kathy wants to know if there's a discount for houses of worship. So Kathy, if you email us, we will, um, we will do what you need. Uh, in order to get you a discount, okay? Thank you, Jennifer, I needed that. <laughs> All right, okay. So um, what I wanna do is for the newbies, those of you that are brand new to QuickBooks, 
I know that you need a lot of training. I can't possibly teach you everything. Um, certainly not here. We're basically out of time, but I want to give you the major points of setup. Okay, so let me just take you over here. So I'm going to teach you the theory of how things need to be set up in QuickBooks. Okay, let me go ahead and end this poll. All right, so this is just going to take a couple of minutes and then we'll take a few more questions and then we'll, um, we will uh, finish up. All right, <clears throat> now just look at the screen here. Let's all just take a breath because I know even those of you that are already using QuickBooks, you're probably not getting the reports out of the software that you need because you don't have things set up correctly. So when you're entering a transaction in QuickBooks, all right, when you're entering a transaction in QuickBooks, there are three things that you need to worry about. The first thing that you need to worry about and that you need to tell QuickBooks is what I call the natural category, okay? And that's what your chart of accounts list needs to be. Now, when I say the natural category, some people call it the object of the account or the object of the transaction. So maybe it's an income transaction. So you would point it to an income account like individual donations. If it's an expense transaction, salaries and wages, rent, postage. This is the normal way of thinking of expenses. That's why I call it the natural category. That's what your chart of accounts list needs to be set up as, the natural category of expenses. When you go into QuickBooks, doesn't matter which one I go into, I'll go into desktop. When I'm entering a transaction, I'll go into write checks here. This is where you put the natural category. This is the natural way of thinking about expenses. We should all pretty much have the same expense accounts, okay? Natural way of thinking about expenses. Also in the down, if you're in the online edition and you're feeling left out um, in the online edition, uh, I gotta go back into, I gotta go back into, see here and there we go um i went to the wrong data file again okay well we're running out of time so it's the same in the online edition you got to put the account they call it category but it's the natural category now there's a second thing that nonprofits need to track and that is the program that the activity or the transaction relates to. Some people call it the function or the why of the transaction. I saw a few of you are using the class list to track your grants. You should be using the class list for your program admin and fundraising, and you should be using the customer job list for your grants. So you have a separate class for each program that you're running, and then if there are transactions like buying QuickBooks that don't have anything to do with a the program, they're just kind of admin stuff, you put that to an admin class. And then if it's just the cost of raising more money, like maybe the part of the fund development director's salary that goes towards when she's out there raising money, she spends 40% of her time on it. So 40% of her salary should go to fundraising. That's the function. I need both of these pieces of information. The people that make mistakes, what they do is they incorrectly have these things as expense accounts on their PL. You should make these the expense accounts. If you have an expense account called fundraising, then I don't know what the natural category is. And I need to know that. I need to know both that it was for fundraising and I need to know, was it for postage for fundraising? Was it for printing for fundraising? Was it somebody's salary for fundraising? I need to know that, okay? The reason why I need to know that is because that's how we have to report on audits and on tax returns. Let me just pull this up here. Um, when you look at an audited financial statement, this is what the expenses need to look like, okay? We need to have a column for each program, one for management, one for fundraising, and then the rows 
need to be the natural categories of expenses. In this example, there's only one program, okay? And so you can get that in QuickBooks provided that you use the class feature for it. So here we have the guidance center here, and I can split transactions between program, admin, and fundraising. And that leaves the customer job field for the grant, all right? And so we'll go back to here. So the grant that paid for it, that's what you use the customer job field for. Now, if you have the online edition, you can turn that customer job into a project. Um, and it's something that I'm going to be teaching. I have a restricted grants webinar that's coming up in December, but I'll also am going to be teaching it in November. Um, but projects are basically customer jobs in the online edition, all right? So if you've been putting your grants in the class list, start with the next grant, the next new one, put it in the customer job list and start tracking it that way. Now let's take a look at a couple of cool reports that you can get. Uh, and I'm gonna go into the online edition so that those of you that are in the online edition won't feel left out. Um, let me sign out of here and sign into the right file. And almost done. Let's see, I will do um, this one. All right, Let me close out of here. All right, so here's the online edition. All right, so when I go to my reports, I can run a standard PL. You know, that's not a problem. I can pick the date range for it. Uh, 7 1 of 24 to June 30 of 25, uh, or 7 1 of, well, you know what? Let's just make it all date so we can get some data in here. All right, there we go. But you see the, the display columns by? I can look at the report by class and it gives me a P and L that has a column for each one of my programs, one for admin and one for fundraising, so that I can see how much money I'm spending on each program, as well as how profitable each program is, all right? So that's why I love using classes. Now I'll touch on locations. This is something that's only in the online edition, but when I go to advanced, and I click here on locations, I'm gonna go ahead and click it, categories. Classes, you can assign one row, you can assign a transaction to multiple classes. Locations, I'm gonna turn that feature on, you cannot. So let me show you what I mean. When I'm clicking on a transaction, either one that I am manually entering or one that I'm getting from a download, you can split a transaction between different programs. Some of it went to fundraising and some of it went to the guidance center. The location, you got one for the whole transaction. So what do you use locations for? Locations. If you have a nonprofit that has different locations, that's a good use of it. That's a good use of it, okay? Um, explain the difference between a transaction and an expense. Any, all, golly, anytime there is an exchange with another party, it's a transaction, okay? In uh, Deposits are transactions, checks are transactions, okay? Expenses are a type of transaction, okay? So expenses are a subset of all the transactions, all right? All right, uh, okay. Now, restricted grants, tracking restricted grants is a dicey situation. 
Uh, I'm going to go ahead and, uh, but it's very easily done both in the desktop and in the online edition, provided that you use the customer job field to track it. And let's see, there it is right there. Let me open this up. And I'm just going to tease you with this, and then we really do have to go. How many people? We still, we still got over 200 people on the call. Wow. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and click done here. So when you're entering a transaction, here's where you can put the expense account. Here's where you put program, admin, or fundraising. Here's where you can put the grant. Now for each grant, you wanna have a separate name for each one of your grants and you put this in the customer list. And so you can say, all right, this transaction, it went for space rental, it went for this program and it was paid for out of this grant, okay? So see that way, I can run a PL not only for the by class, but I can also run it for a grant. Okay. And I think I already have one here. Let me go to my reports. And uh, here's one right here that I entered a budget for. So basically, these are transactions that I have entered. And when I entered the transactions, I pointed the transaction to the RAC Foundation grant. So I can run a P&L for the grant. And this basically shows me how much I've spent out of the grant. I've got 27,000 left to spend. I can put a budget in for it and it doesn't screw up my overall books. All right. So at this point, we're 10 minutes over. So I think what I'm going to do is apologize for running long and tell you that I agree with the person at the beginning of the webinar that said we should do a separate webinar for desktop than we do for online. It probably would have made it go quicker. So I apologize for that. And then to tell you that when you get a chance, um, go to quickbooksmadeeasy.com. And if you click on webinars, uh, sign up for our three-day webinar series. Now, if you're only interested in tracking restricted grants, I got a whole two hour webinar on that and it's with GrantStation. We're doing it for desktop people on December 8th and we're doing it with online on December 9th and you can click on those to sign up for it there. Our three-day webinar series will cover restricted grants as well, just won't go in as deep as these ones on the 8th or the 9th, all right? Um, I'm exhausted. <laughs> I think I'm going to turn it back over to you. Uh, and as they there we say go. in the church, there's nothing else to say. Greg, you have done it all. Thank you so much. Thank you to your team page, Bill and um, Barbara in the background. We're going to send you this video within 48 hours with the slides. And everybody have a great day. Bye bye. Thank you so much for coming. <laughs>